This is what God has bestowed upon important men since the beginning of time. Not just important men, all men. The men in the Titanic as the boat was going down, about to be sucked into the icy cold water. Some of the last thoughts in those men's head, I know, I know, was at least I saw my daughter and my wife get on that boat. Absolutely. I'm happy to plunge into this ice cold water because there they are on that boat away from danger. Everyone we love and everyone in the world who we care about was taken care of. And I said, Andrew, would you rather us both be at liberty, but someone else in our life suffer? Mum suffer? Our kids suffer? The Never. mothers of our children Never. suffer? No, I'm glad it was me. I'm glad I was the one who was suffering and everyone else was okay because that's what being a man means. When you're a man, absolutely you're right. It is our job to suffer so the people around us do not suffer. And that's why if you're a man and you're waking up every day and you're not trying your very best to be important or upgrade yourself or upgrade your character or you're lacking motivation, then you have a serious problem because it is your job to be capable of dealing with the insurmountable pressure which God is going to put upon you so that when you suffer, everyone around you does well. Our lives are set up that even if they throw us in a dungeon today, everybody we love will be okay forever. And that is what's most important. That's the most important thing. That's success. And that was absolutely comforting in jail when we discussed that and we said, everyone we love is okay. You and I just have to make it through this. And that's absolutely not really comforting. And if you're a man sitting at home right now, you need to sit and say, okay, if they plucked me from my life, if they picked me up and threw me in a room and locked me in a jail cell. Which can happen. Which can happen to anybody, especially as they continue these matrix attacks on masculinity as a whole. Would your wife have a roof over her head? Would your children eat? Would your family be okay? Think about these things. This is what you're working for. You're not working to make money so you can buy a Lamborghini. You're working to make money and you're thinking outside of the box and you're becoming your best version of yourself so all the people around you will always be okay no matter what happens. It is your job as a man to suffer. And we did our job fantastically, absolutely not as we should. We always will. And we always will. And everybody around us was okay. And that is extremely comforting in times of hardship because we're built for suffering. We were absolutely not really built for suffering. No matter how close I came to crying inside of that jail cell, I knew all the people around me were safe and all the people around me could eat. And that's all I cared about. I used my phone calls. When I would call other people and they were asking me how I was, I'd say, we don't want to talk about me. How are you? Are you okay? Are you okay with the media pressure? Are you okay? Is your Are your bills paid? Do you have money? Are, are, can you eat? I'm in a jail cell in Romania making sure that everyone I love is okay. But I don't need them to sit and worry about me. I worry about them. I sat in a jail cell making sure I could fix the problems for the people I love outside in the free world from a dungeon. That is what a man does. And you must prepare and set up your life for that. You must be prepared to be plucked from life and understand that everybody around you who once relied on you will still be relying on you even when you sit in that jail cell. It's still up to you. You are still the man of the household. You are still the top G of your life. Only you. And if you don't pay the bills, who's going to do it? Your wife's just going to what? Go get a job, get like five jobs and raise your kids? How's she going to do that? You must be prepared for these things. That is what you're working for. So if you wake up every day as a man and you say, I don't have motivation to become strong. I don't want to work hard and get rich. I don't want to try and become financially free. What you're saying is that the second you disappear, the second you disappear from your matrix controlled job, everyone who loves you and respected you and relied on you is going to starve. How can you live that way as a man? Absolutely not really unacceptable. Matrix media, they say, why did you get so big? Because I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth, which every man knows is intrinsically true in his heart because God has instilled him with a, a basic degree of morality of right and wrong. I'm saying things to a 17 year old boy and he's going, he makes sense. I get it. Everything I was told so far just didn't quite click, but this does. And that's what they're so scared of. I was talking about this the other day. I was talking about how I have a, a pet peeve and one of my pet peeves is, is painkillers. And I was being typical me and I was going over the top. And I was discussing with this guy. This guy said, have you got any aspirin? I said, there's no aspirin in my house. And he said, why? I said, brother, you are not facing 1% of the life difficulties I am facing. Think about it. No government's trying to lock you up. Matrix isn't after you. They're not trying to frame you. Nobody wants you dead. When God finally gives you a tiny headache, to give you something to show you're half a man, a little bit of resilience. You pussy out with an aspirin. Yeah, you just have a headache. Just have a headache. And not only just have a headache, have a headache and don't mention it, because I don't care. So don't even talk about it. Nobody needs to know. <laughs> what do you want? Do you want therapy? You want sympathy? Nobody cares you have a headache. Shut up. Like nearly any problem on earth, 
whether it's men's mental health, whether it's women's mental health, no matter what it is, whether it's crime, no matter what it is, how do you fix the problem? By building men of caliber, by building men of capability and status and honor and dignity, and by building men of ability to be good standing citizens who are respected by their peers. All of it comes back to improving men. All of it. Every single problem you can possibly name, it comes back to building strong men of capability who are respected. It's always the baseline of humanity. Men always has been the baseline of humanity. And that's why nearly every problem we can name, all of them are in a direct negative correlation with masculinity. As masculinity plummets, all of this garbage is going up through the roof. Is that a coincidence? Absolutely not really not. It's, it's, you can literally see it with a graph and you can see it happening. Saving the way men think and operate, growing a new generation of men who understand they have duty to themselves, their last name and God, literally saves the world. All of it. Women respect men who stick by their principles and their beliefs, and the principles and beliefs of a man are always to do what he is supposed to do regardless of how he feels. You must train when you don't feel like training, you must protect when you don't feel like protecting, you must be a good man. And when you're actually a truly good man and a high value man, this is something I absolutely realized in jail. I have no problem suffering if the people I love are not suffering. My children are taken care of. The women I love are taken care of. My mother is taken care of. Everybody around me is fine. Even if they've removed me from my life and locked me in a jail cell, everybody I love is taken care of and is protected and is living good. I must suffer because I am a man. I am the head of my empire. I'm the head of the clan. Of course, I will suffer, but the people I love are not suffering. If you look at anything that builds a man into a man, there's a degree of suffering. So many men say, I want to be the man, but they don't want to suffer, they don't want to fight, and I don't understand why, because even if you look at a superhero movie, they tell you. Even in superhero movies, they make it very clear. Batman's parents died. That's why he's Batman. It's very hard to become a man and have a man who's respected and has stories and is capable when he only had a nice life and experiences. It's usually the things that made you the best version of you are usually the worst things that happen to you. All the bad things have to happen. There's no way to get there without the bad things. Where do you find the strength when you're in these difficult situations? I always find the strength from, from my last name. I'm Andrew Tate. I'm Andrew Tate, so I just have to do it. I'm in a Romanian jail cell. I wake up, there's cockroaches in my bed. They're all over my face. Well, am I going to cry? Am I going to go and sign a piece of paper and say I'm guilty? Am I going to sell my brother out? No, I'm going to take the cockroaches off my mouth. I'm going to do some push-ups, because I'm Andrew Tate. When shit really gets hard, Honor and courage and bravery and your last name is all you've ever had. Especially with men, none of them are bestowed with the things that the masculine essence needs to be a good man. You need pride, you need honor.